Hello, everyone, and welcome to Making the Jump, a video series about innovation and digital higher education. I'm your host, Justin Hassan, and today I want to talk a little bit about digital literacy practices, particularly the integrating of video into uh, digital storytelling or digital narrative uh, structures. I don't know about you, but one of the more common things I've been encountering lately is reading a really engaging sort of scrolling digital narrative only to find a video that isn't really connected, embedded in the middle of it. Right. And so you're reading this really rich uh, story about um, apples and apple orchards. And in the middle is this video about cats. And you're trying to figure out, like, how do apples and cats relate to one another? That isn't to say that apples and cats can't relate. Um, but a lot of times, just because we can embed videos, um, that doesn't mean that the readers or our digital experience folks are going to really understand what that video is doing. Nor do we want to read through a whole video or read through a whole uh, paper that's only like a thousand words long, but have a 45 minute video in the middle. So what I want to do today is offer you uh, some, some guidance, three sort of what I call the three C's of integrating video into digital narrative as a way of thinking about improving this practice, right? And those three C's stand for context, contribution, and consideration. Um, in terms of context, you know, videos can't stand alone. They're like quotes in regular writing. They have to be integrated with your work. And so um, you have to find a way to provide context so that the audience can meaningfully situate those um, media assets in the in, in in connection with your own writing and your own processes, um, and so you know I often tell students when they're doing this to think about what is the video focus on, you know what is it created for, who is it created by, who's in the video, uh, but more importantly, in what ways does it connect to or you know sort of enhance maybe some of the thinking in your own work. And if you really don't know those questions, or you don't provide that uh, some of that guidance for readers, um, they're going to be just as lost as you know as everyone else. Like oh well, all of a sudden here's a video about cats, and so you know we have to build a little bit of the context so we can make the connections or build the bridges for readers. The second um, guide or rule is about contribution, which is specifically focusing on the part that you are bringing into the production. So, you know, in, in, in regular writing, we wouldn't quote a 14 page essay in the middle of a five page essay. It just, it doesn't make any sense. So we don't want to embed a 45 minute video or a 15 minute video in a, in a short piece. So we want to think about what is the contribution? What are the specific elements that you need uh, particularly if it's a video from somebody else's creation. Now, if it's your own work, it's a little bit of a different situation, but more and o more often we're embedding videos from YouTube or TED Talks or um, you know, local news stories and things like that. And so when we do those kinds of practices, we want to control the size of the contribution, either embed it as an edited clip, so it's down to a smaller piece, uh, or embed it with start and stop functions so that it automatically starts at like three minutes and 14 seconds and ends at five minutes rather than one to 15. Or if you don't have those options or you can't figure out how to make the technology do the, the auto embed play structure, um, then you can signpost it in the text. You can just say in the video below, if you watch from 114 to 227, you'll see X, Y, and Z. So it's, it's a matter of making sure the audience knows not only where the video comes from, um, but what part of it they need to focus on. Um, and if you can't control that technically or uh, computationally, then uh, we want to give people verbal and visual cues for what they should be watching. The third part is the consideration, and this is perhaps the most overlooked element of integrating resource material, which is to say, whether it be video or a quote or a, um, an audio file or an image, right? typically speaking, you need to give some time and thought to why this thing is here and help the audience understand the connections, right? Um, and so, you know, why does the video matter? Why is it included in this work? What is it um, helping to contribute to your production? Uh, and, and so one of the things that I do with students is I have them answer sort of three guiding questions which is how does a video connect to your story or your expression? How does it develop or extend or enhance your arguments, your ideas, your elements? Um, or, or you know, how does it help move your conversation forward? Now, you don't have to answer all three of those to provide the consideration, but, if, uh, but by manually having students sort of work out those issues and try to respond to them, some combination of answers from those three questions typically needs to be in the production so that when I I'm reading your piece, right? And I'm enjoying this wonderful story about apple orchards. And all of a sudden we get a video about cats. I know that this video was made by the founder of the apple orchard and that this cat was a local element uh, and uh, prowled the orchard regularly as a part of like a barn cat situation. And that why we are considering this is that the apple orchard is actually named after the cat. And this is what the implications are for that particular dynamic. Now that's a random sort of set of details, but if I provide that information for you in the context and in the structure and the flow of my sort of scrolling narrative 
narrative or my scrolling essay or my digital exposition, um, then you can meaningfully situate the video and, and engage it in some capacity to help move thinking forward and, and further develop uh, the complexity of the work. So um, those are my guidelines, my three C's to integrating video into your digital narrative. Uh, feel free to stick around and, and check out some future episodes which, with us, which will include how to write conclusions in digital storytelling, um, enhancing learning experiences through digital pedagogy, uh, and embracing failure in digital learning as sort of the three next episodes we want to explore. Otherwise, feel free to uh, ping me on Twitter at postdigitaljh, or shoot me an email at hotson at indiana.edu, and or follow our, our general um, at, journal at thejumpplus.net, or J-U-M-P-P-L-U-S.net. Um, check out the Journal for Undergraduate Multimedia Projects, where a lot of this stuff and these practices and skills are sort of uh, housed or inspired or, or, or integrated into our daily lives. So I appreciate you watching. I uh, look forward to hearing your comments and thoughts. If there's any ideas for other shows you want us to do, let me know uh, and I will see what I can integrate into the mix.